It was through a relationship with a Japanese paper maker, Nawaki Sakamoto of Tokyo, and now Seiichi Hiroshima of Tokyo, that I began to work with Japanese paper. It's a single sheet, and it's handmade. I love paper. Um, I have more paper than I can use in a lifetime, probably some of it up to a century old. The image itself, some sort of spooky transformation of the deer and the human. Um, I often think in the drawings that it's more of an ecological statement that we are no greater than they are and they are no greater than we are and, and we depend on one another. It was just a sort of a, uh, an homage to a very good friend and a, who uh, laughs with me when we're happy and prays for me when I'm in trouble. So it's mutually beneficial back and forth. <laughs> I spent 10 years uh, before I became a professional artist working with handicapped children in the public school system. Um, and I became aware of the fact that a lot of children uh, arrive in the world and then find themselves without parents, sometimes even without grandparents. This work began as a work addressing the wonderful work that grandparents who raise the children do. So it began as, as life out of balance. The back of the coyote becomes the grandmother with the 111 marks tattooed on her chin, which would connote a woman, and the side there's a grandpa waving. So I was thinking of life out of balance, but also there's a, a clam, a cockle between his front legs. That's where I live because one day I was out there and I see coyote tracks and he was out digging clams. So even in our area, you know, coyote's a, a living entity right there under our living room window. Up from the coyote extends a basket made by my friend Zeke Head. And then inside I think of it as my daughter Lily peeking out into the new world. The eagle represents the spirituality, the red road spirituality. And then up above, no matter even how beautiful the eagle flies, these little birds come in. We call them the humblers because they make him jog and he's not quite as hip slick and cool as he'd like to be because these little things are creating problems. And then I added the lamprey, the eel, to the salmon. There's a male and female salmon. And then I realized this had changed. It wasn't about grandparents raising children anymore. It was just simply about things happening in the world. Then the eagle in its beautiful flight is knocked slightly akimbo by smaller little, not life-threatening things, but they're threatening things and they make us uncomfortable sometimes in the world. And I realized that it was a statement not about life out of balance, but just about life in itself and how uh, what I was looking at as being out of balance was really a blessing in that at least there was a grandparent to pick that child up. After having had a stroke and heart trouble four or five years now, you know, we were laughing, uh, Kay Walking Stick and I, about not being so scary anymore. <laughs> We've become children's illustrators, you know. <laughs> We've lost our teeth. And so, now I call them cartoons in wood. You know, I make these things that are not as threatening, you know. And I think it's because through those debilitating situations, I've come to say, oh God, I like being alive, you know. I like being able to see, even though my vision's somewhat compromised. I like being able to see. I want to live. How do I do that? I make crazy things and go forward just as I always did. But now I'm very grateful. <laughs>